Thanks for clicking on the video. This is not a marathon and this is not an interview. I got invited to a campfire discussion. Actually, the discussion wasn't planned, but I happen to have my recording gear with me, my podcast machine. I got invited to sit around a campfire with a bunch of guys last week. And Saturday night, I got to go over to my friend Joe's house. They fed me, by the way. Man, we had a delicious plate full of ham and sweet potatoes and mashed potatoes and green bean casserole and a good banana pudding afterwards. Thank you all for feeding me, Joe. But I got to just capture his story while we all sat around the campfire, and I thought it was really fun. Before we get into that, you guys don't forget to go to my website, which is now live, DixieCrypted.com. Over there, you'll find the What If It's True podcast. There's three hours of podcasts that I've been able to do. There's going to be more to come. But uh, for people who haven't heard about it, just type in DixieCrypted.com. And there's a little button. If you go to my YouTube channel, there's a little button right up there in the channel art that says website. If you click it, it'll take you right to the website. You can listen to three more hours of different type stories. None of it's repeated. It's not on Dixie. It's all original stuff. But let's go to this campfire discussion. I hope you guys enjoy this. It's the first time I've been able to do it. And I had such a good time. And this family that I got to spend the evening with are just good people. Just good people. And I hope you all enjoy Joe's stories. All right, here we go. I guess if we're going to talk about this subject, we might as well start from the beginning. Uh, I uh, grew up in northwest Alabama, uh, central Tennessee area, and uh, it was just part of the culture that everybody knew what or knew that there was something that was a booger man or a woolly booger or something like that. But uh, nobody ever see one, nobody ever talked about seeing one. And so uh, it was just like a boogeyman type thing. You know, it was, uh, uh, well, if you don't get inside before dark, booger man's going to get you. Or, or some woolly booger's going to come over the hill if you go out too early in the morning hunting, and wait, you know, or something like that. And if, uh, or uh, if uh, you don't get home and get uh, on this porch before it gets dark, then booger might get you. He might come around a, a house and get you or whatever. Well, so like most kids uh, that grew up in the same time that I did, uh, you know, we heard about the booger, but we never even thought that it would be real. You know, we, uh, we'd we sat on the uh, porch at uh, my grandma's house up in uh, Wayne County, Tennessee, and you could hear loud uh, whipper wheels. I mean, it's like ear piercing loud in the evening. And uh, I'd, uh, I'd say, boy, those birds are loud. And uh, my uh, grandma's daddy-in-law, so her and her husband lived with him on his uh, farm up there in uh, Cypress Inn. And he'd say, oh, that's a booger holler. He'd say, a little old bird can't holler that loud. And uh, not that, uh, not more than once or twice if it uh, tried to do it. But this would be continual, uh, like uh, whippoorwill whistles all night long. And uh, he'd say, that's a booger. And uh, my grandma would say, oh, that's not a booger. So said, that, that's a bird. Don't try to scare them kids. Well, moving on up, I, that's the way that kind of went. Oh, he, he was adamant, though, at night. If you ain't on this porch when the sun goes down and I can't holler and hear you holler back, I'm cutting, coming hunting for you. And this is an uh, old guy in the late 70s, early 80s uh, of his life at this time. And uh, he was serious about it. 
He say don't get caught, don't get caught in the woods when it's uh, dark up here, cause there's been people who uh, lived in this uh, holler for their whole life. They go coon hunting and come up missing, and they've hunted and uh, and uh, farmed their uh, property their whole life, but they get mixed up and get uh, lost in the woods. You never see them no more. And uh, you know well, he he would he would talk about people that at all. Uh, that had happened to when he was in his uh, early or uh, early twenties and late teens that I'd, I'd never know, but they still had family living around up there, and uh, so that was uh, that was that was the uh, environment uh, that I, I grew up in. Yeah, but uh, I never thought they were real. Didn't even didn't think nothing about them. So I was down there in Texas in 2005. I was working as security guard down there in uh, Eva Dale, and uh, there was a river down there that had uh, had property that I would uh, go and check the uh, doors on because the paper mill owned most of the property in, in that little old, old town. And uh, so we were getting ready for Hurricane Katrina. It hadn't hit yet, but uh, we were going around and getting ready for uh, that uh, storm. And I was checking doors uh, one evening. The evening before then, I had been checking uh, gates and I'd heard something hoop. It sounded just like a large ape, woo, 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 like that. And uh, uh, as I got closer to where it was, it would get uh, quieter. And whoop, 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 and then it would get quiet. And I went and checked that gate over there. And when I turned around and started leaving, the farther away from it I got, the louder it got. And uh, it was the same hoop. It was three times, whoop, 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 like that. And the first two was a monosyllable, uh, uh, monopitch sound, I guess. But the second one always uh, uh, broke. broke, yeah. And I thought... Yeah, it is like a chimpanzee does. That's what I thought about, or or maybe a howling monkey. And uh, so, uh, uh, every time we uh, have a storm uh, in that area, uh, our paper mill backed up about seventeen thousand acres of, of paper uh, woods there. Pupwood. Yeah, pup wood, and uh, so. Uh, Oh, didn't nobody ever go back in there? But uh, they always told us, you know, don't go back there on the on the electric golf cart that we that we uh, patrolled the plant with, because uh, there's dangerous animals back there. And uh, they tried to tell us that there was a uh, a uh, zoo uh, train that had uh, wrecked uh, years ago, at, and uh, you you would see black cats back there, big old jaguars, uh, and uh, and uh, you would hear stuff back there, and I, and you know if I heard something, I'd go say, well, uh, uh, are there any kind of reports, of anything, or you know, uh, like that, uh, that may have got out in a previous uh, hurricane or whatnot. And uh, so I went and asked my uh, supervisor about it, and he said, just stay away from there uh, a couple days. He said, "Don't don't worry about that. Oh, as long as that gate's locked, ain't nobody going back there anyway." So that was on a, a Friday night. Oh, and I went around. I thought about it because I went and checked uh, whales out in the swamp all the time, and there was whales that oh, when you're out there, you would get a creepy feeling. But I was thinking, well, I haven't been down here in the swamp very long. Maybe it's just I'm from uh, uh, up. Uh, in woodland areas, you know, it swamps completely different. And I thought, well, maybe, maybe it's uh, something that uh, is just feels different because I ain't used to it. And uh, so I'd go check them and everything. And uh, that next day, while, while I was doing that, I would I would listen see if I hear anything. Which that's just because I didn't know the the train, and I I want to listen see if I what I can learn new. And uh, so that next day I was checking that property uh, uh, is behind Evadale uh, High School down there, right along Natchez River. And uh, I was walking down there and uh, I, I grabbed the door and, uh, and uh, shook it and, and I'd hear someone 
<laughs> just like a just like a chimpanzee it's sitting there doing something but it was almost humming and uh, there was almost a rhythm to it but uh, i couldn't there wasn't no song that i knew that sounded like that but but it was sitting there going long and i and i was sitting there thinking this has got to be some kind of bird some kind of crane or something that i don't know what it is i'm gonna go see what that is uh, it, it sounds just like a, a, a monkey, you know. And uh, so I walked down there, and there was this little old path went down there. And I walked down that little old path, and I was just looking for a bird or something. And I got down there, and uh, there was uh, something. Uh, I was facing uh, southwest, uh, looking across the river, I think it was. Uh, and uh, there was something uh, to my right that was turned and it was down in the water and you could see its back. And I thought, dang, that looks like a bear because that, you know, that thing was that wide, that tall. What color was it? It was uh, brown. Uh, okay. It was uh, it was like a, a dark sienna color, but uh, where, the, where the water had splashed on it, you know, it was a little bit darker and there was lighter highlights in it. And, uh, and uh, you could see uh, every now and then a little bit of gray on the sides and, uh, but uh, it, it was over there moving around, and I guess it heard me, and it stopped. And uh, when it stopped, it turned its head like this right here, and then turned like that and looked at me. It, it couldn't turn its head very much, that it turned its whole waist after it turned its head a little bit. And when I seen that ear, it was like a monkey or human ear, but it's real little for the size of the head. I mean, that ear looked like it's that big, and the head was about that wide. <laughs> And uh, I thought, that ain't no bear. Yeah. And that thing got there, and it stopped like it, uh, it got his hands out of water, and it sat like this right here, and then it stood up. And that thing come up almost to the top of that, uh, uh, his head come almost to the top of that uh, bank there. And I went back later, and that uh, bank was uh, 10 foot and two inches uh, from down. Uh, the water was low that year, and uh, it liked about that much. So, his head uh, standing up I'd never seen it if I hadn't walked over there but when I walked over it it stopped and it stood up and it it did its hands like this right here like a, a gorilla would and it sat there and looked at me a minute and I thought crap I looked at the truck and I looked at, at back at it and that truck was at least 200 feet away he wasn't 90 feet away so I was like he's got me if he's gonna get me because I done walked up on him. That's probably, oh, uh, he probably come up at a uh, bank and get me for. I took four steps. I mean, uh, so I sat there. I said, "Well, he's gonna get me. He's gonna get me. I'm gonna watch him." And I sat there and watched him. I looked at as much of him as I could. And he sat there and he watched me. And he'd look across the, look across the water and he'd look back. And his expression on his face mirrored what I was thinking. And it's like, oh, it's like, oh crap, he caught me. And then he was thinking, crap, you know, how am I gonna get out of this? Oh. Uh, and, and I mean, oh, and we'd look at each other, he'd, he'd, he'd look at you, he'd drop his head, he'd look up, he'd drop his head, he'd look up. And then he turned 90 degrees and went across that water and he kept his water, uh, water his hands up off the water. And I don't know how he, if he knew where to step or what, but he never got over chest deep in that water. And he kept his hands out of the water the whole time watching me till he got a little bit over halfway across. Then he turned around, he headed for the other side. And, oh, and he got over there. It was unreal how fast he got over there. I mean, he, he's walking in chest deep water, which I would have been swimming in that anyway because he was a lot bigger than me. Yeah. But uh, he got out over there and he, he went up at uh, that bank up there in about two steps. He turned towards the west and he took off. And when he left, it, it was like uh, it was like a blur behind him. I don't know if it was his uh, his uh, hair blowing in the wind or whatever, but it, you just see like as fast as you he went across there. It's like he's there and then he's there and then he's gone. And you never heard nothing. You never saw any limbs uh, uh, shaking when he went behind nothing. It's like crap. You know, oh, did I really see that? 
So I sat there and I, I, I went back and looked around. The, the whole area where he was was muddy and you could see where he dug up rocks and stuff. I think he was probably looking for crawfish or mussels or something. Yeah. But uh, he looked like he was, uh, he'd been a few days without eating. Uh, this, his uh, hair was all matted with, uh, all kind of like he'd been sleeping on that uh, swamp mud, you know. And uh, uh, he, uh, he got up and he, he just went. And uh, uh, he, uh, he looked like a, a mix between a gorilla and a orangutan. I never once thought, hey, that's a man, that's some kind of man. Uh, his you face. Think it was a booger? No, uh, that wasn't even cross. That that had no I, that had no uh, place in my universe at this time. Okay. And I sat there thinking, this this got to be some kind of uh, uh, monkey that or gorilla that got loose from somewhere. This is exotic. This ain't you know, I've never seen nothing like this in any of the states I've ever hunted in, you know. And uh, so I went back. And I asked uh, my supervisor, uh, I said, uh, they got any reports of any kind of uh, apes or anything in the woods around here? He laughed at me. He said, no. Uh, he said, oh, ain't, ain't nothing like that around here. I, I said, well, I'd already told him about what I'd heard last, the night before. So uh, I told him what I saw. He's like, yeah, don't put that in your DAR. <laughs> you know, it, yeah. uh, but uh, so... Oh, I went home. Oh, that's Saturday. Oh, every Sunday morning, I called my grandma. Oh, I, my off days were Monday and Tuesday, and Sundays, oh, on Sunday mornings, I called my grandma and talked to her. And I was telling her, I said, Mama, you ain't going to believe it. I saw the funniest, weirdest-looking gorilla I've ever seen. She said, what'd you see? And I started describing it to her. And she said, oh, you saw a booger. I said... Boogers ain't real. This thing was real. I mean, this thing was big. She's like, yeah, you saw a booger. Said, they won't bother you if you leave them alone. I said, you always said boogers wasn't real. She said, well, I know uh, y'all kids like playing in the woods down there, and I didn't want to scare y'all. Uh, said, they won't hurt you. Said, they might steal a chicken or two or, or a livestock, but uh, said, they don't usually bother people. Wow. And uh, so that's when I found out that boogers were real. Oh, so Mama was the type of person she ain't gonna lie to you, save herself. Yeah. And uh, so, and and she wasn't, she wasn't saying it uh, to get uh, any attention. It was just every day. Well, that's a book. As that's a matter what, of fact, like, right? Like, like you saw a squirrel. Right. And uh, so, uh, from then on, I figured, well, if, if boogers are real, I want to find out everything I can about them. I mean, I, I've. Uh, Hog hunted, I've deer hunted so much at that point, you know, if I didn't want to meet, well, it wasn't no use me going deer hunting because, you know, I've shot, I, I, I've shot so many I didn't have to prove I could shoot them like, you know, some people uh, go to their deer uh, club and uh, they want to shoot the biggest buck or whatever. I, I always hunted uh, uh, for meat more than anything else. So uh, I, I started down there. And it was stuff that I couldn't, I couldn't figure out. So I got on the internet, and at that time, oh, I, I didn't figure anybody even cared about a booger. You know, that's just something that I was going to find out because, well, they're real. And uh, I got to looking on uh, different uh, websites and stuff and got to seeing uh, that uh, people would put stuff on there and uh, different signs like twisted limbs and and broke saplings and stuff, and I started looking for that. And, uh, you know, I thought, well, I'm probably never gonna see another one of these things. But, uh, oh, I sat there, and oh, I'd seen some more down there, but oh, there, some of the stuff didn't make sense. And oh, for a long time, I didn't even mention that I seen them for the simple fact that I was there and I didn't believe the stuff that I seen. Yeah. You know, it don't do no good to tell nobody else because they're going to say I'm lying anyway. Yeah. So, uh, there, and I tell uh, people I talk about, you know, there's some stuff that I, I, I don't even believe myself and I'm there, you know, and I, I didn't talk about it. But uh, oh, I went down there and uh, I found uh, me a spot along the Sabine River down there and, and one up in Cal Bayou. 
And uh, the first uh, booger I saw was uh, besides that one that uh, when I, I was actually out looking for them, I, I went back uh, uh, in the uh, property down there with, uh, by Cal Bayou and uh, I seen something digging in the ground. And I, I went in there just, it was dark as it is now, but it's before sun come up. And I was in there looking. I walked about a thousand yards back in that swamp, and it, it wasn't fast going because you know our stuff in there. You, oh, I was always scared of running up on hogs down there. And if you scare a hog, that's a mean booger in itself. If, oh, yeah. if they, and so I'd walk down there and I stopped and listen. And I got I got down there, and there's this a big old oh, oh, pecan tree down there, and oh. I seen something digging on the other side of it, and uh, when the sun's coming up, uh, I looked at it and it looked like a chow. It, it was squatted down, and and you see dirt going, and I thought, there's a chow down here. That's, that's ain't, there ain't no houses nowhere near. And uh, so I went and I sat down and I watched. And every now and then they turn and look look my direction. Well, when the sun got up, I realized that wasn't no chow. First of all, it's two big bit chow. It's about four and a half, five foot tall. But it was real fuzzy like chows. But when it uh, when it uh, stopped digging it, uh, it's hand, it had hands. Uh, its hands was covered with that blue uh, swamp mud, uh, uh, gumbo looking stuff, all the way up nearly to its elbows. And it, it sat back and it looked at me like this right here. It dig a little bit, I get. The only thing I can figure is it's probably digging up crawfish, uh, but uh, it uh, dug down there, and uh, when it seen me and it got daylight, it see I was looking at it, it, it run around that tree and left. And uh, so after it left, I sat over a while, and I went over there to look, see uh, what kind of tracks it left, because it left, it dug mud up. There was uh, water in the hole where it had been digging down there. And uh, I looked around there, and it was little old bitty people, uh, uh, barefoot tracks in there, you know. Uh, little old bitty ones, Small and you, track. yeah, you see the hands in there look like look like somebody grabbed that mud and pulled it, and uh, I thought that's pretty weird. So uh, I couldn't explain what it was, uh, and uh, I decided, well, I'll come back and uh, you walk through there, and you could see twisted uh, limbs every now and then, and uh, uh, it looked like uh, limbs that a. Uh, Mm. A bush hog had twisted up. You know, you see those side cutters the state uses, brings up and twists them. Yeah. But it, it looked like that, but it's just one limb and ain't nothing else touched. Right. And there'd be limbs sticking out farther than it, it'd be twisted. And uh, uh, so uh, I looked around there, and there would always be uh, something uh, in that direction it was pointing at. So uh, I got down there, and I uh, was walking around through there or oh, another time it's probably it's with the same month and oh, my oh, wife had just had a new oh, oh Nathan he was just born his 21 days when Hurricane Katrina hit this is about a week before then so she was preoccupied with him and and oh, I was getting out of house because oh, you know kids oh, he, he was a new baby and he was it was exciting but you know I needed a break so I got out and uh, I went back in that same spot and I walked around there and uh, I, I looked and I wouldn't hear nothing, but I wouldn't hear nothing, I wouldn't see nothing uh, in the beginning. But you could always, every now and then, you'd hear a little bit of, of grass or rustling or, or leaves or something after you've been there a while. Uh, and uh, I just figured if you, if you got still, then they, they're going to know that you're not oh, there to bother them. And they just get used to you being there. And kind of like when you're deer hunting, you walk in and everything knows you there. Right. But oh, after you're there a while, they forget you there. And then they oh, they start moving back around. And oh, so I would hear stuff oh, every now and then. And... Oh, I wouldn't see nothing, but I just hear it, and I'd go back to that same spot where I, I saw that little one. And uh, then around October that year, uh, Hurricane done hit, and we were doing uh, 
16 hour days a lot of times working and on my off days uh, uh, I would go down there or uh, where uh, where that was and uh, and uh, I'd look around through there and uh, that big old pecan tree was down there and had the uh, pecans all on the ground this in uh, around October oh uh, and it was about this time of year and uh, I walked in there one one uh, morning and it was dark and I, I got still and I sat in there listening and you could hear something crunching. It sounded like something's eating something crunchy. And just every now and then. Well, when the sun come up, there was a, a big old a male a booger sitting over there a, a eating pecans. And he'd put four or five in his hand and he'd close his hand and, and do like that right there and look at me. And you'd see him move his hand, that's what that crunching was. He's popping them uh, pecans. And he'd take that pecan and eat it and uh, throw down uh, a shell. And then every now and then he rubbed his mouth, I guess he got them. Uh, Bitter spots. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he's sitting there watching me eating. He'd move around. He wasn't a bit worried uh, about me being there. And uh, we heard something uh, coming through the woods about the same time because it's coming about that direction. So he looked that way and I looked that way. And there was this uh, older female looking. And she was running like this right here, switching out her front hands. And uh, she was running diagonal towards him and keeping her eye on me. And uh, I sat in there watching, I hadn't moved. And she walked or uh, run right up to him and didn't say a word and just slapped him, pow, right, <laughs> right across the face. And he turned his head the way she slapped him and he took off running and she, uh, she was chasing after him. And, what do you think that was all about? Well, you think uh, he was a young one? Yeah, he was. He was a. I think he was a younger one. Uh, he was. He was probably. Uh, you think Mama he, was getting after him? Yeah, he was probably late at adolescent. And uh, originally, I thought maybe he, uh, being a, a older teenage stage, when might have said something and went and uh, run off. And uh, she sat there and thought about it and said she didn't like it. She should come hit the far, hit him, you know. But after talking with some other people, uh, uh, they'd brought up uh, this that made sense too. Maybe she got mad because he was sitting there and I was watching him, and she's teaching him. You don't. It don't matter if he looks uh, look like they uh, ain't friend, ain't uh, uh, dangerous or not. You don't. You don't sit there and let them do it. Which that makes sense just as much as the other one. Yeah. But. Uh, so I'd, uh, I sat over uh, through there, and I'd go back and forth between there and the place over uh, uh, on uh, Sabine uh, River. Uh, you'd go across the, uh, from uh, Pleasure Island over in Louisiana, and there's all kinds of places you fish down through there. And uh, I went down there one day, wasn't even looking for them. I, I liked uh, a redfish when I was down there, and I crabbed a pretty good bit. And uh, so, uh, I went across Louisiana over there, uh, and uh, I was looking for a place to fish. And at the time, I didn't know that was Louisiana. I just thought I was, you know, I was crossing over in there. Uh, but uh, we got over in there, and uh, I was uh, fishing out in the spot I had down there one day. And there's this big old piece of uh, of uh, a spot where. People push their boat in there. You know, they don't have like a boat ramp like we do here. It's concrete. They just go push their boat in there, and if, it's, if they can get it out, they, they pull it in there. And it's a, it was a sandy, muddy bottle, there. And uh, so I'd been out there eating a peanut butter sandwich, and I just throwed it out there on the middle of it. And uh, I figured uh, maybe it, uh, I'd see some uh, seagulls or something if they come eat it. And I got looking over there. That thing had disappeared. And there wasn't no footprints or nothing around there. And I thought, hmm, that's kind of interesting. So uh, when I come back next time, I made a bunch of peanut butter sandwiches, and I threw one over there to see if it was uh, maybe a, a neutral rat getting it, or, or maybe, you know, I wasn't even thinking about boogers. Right. Maybe it was, uh, maybe it was uh, uh, something that a uh, little old animal had lived over there. And it was, but it was a booger. And it's, it's about five and a half, six foot tall. So, yeah, it's a small one. And I would, I would throw that over there, and he'd get over, and he'd reach over, and he'd get it. He could reach far enough not to have to step in that sandy stuff and get it and pull it back, and he'd eat it. Well, I thought, hmm, he might like his peanut butter sandwiches. 
I, I went probably a month up through there on my off days, three or four weeks straight. And I come up there one day, and I didn't bring no peanut butter sandwiches with me. And I just left work, and I, I went and stopped and got me some fishing bait and went went on over there. It was about an hour and a half drive from where I work. And I I sat over there fishing, and that, that little thing come out there, and I was sitting there watching it, and he was looking for them peanut butter sandwiches. Well, I had uh, several... Uh, uh, Rod and reels, catfish reels, a big old ugly sticks, you know, with a yeah. with a spinning reel on it. And I was fishing, and I had this plastic uh, PVC pipe that had a spike on it that you push down in the ground and you hold your your uh, rod with. And so I, I was walking down checking. It. I come uh, I come back and that thing had uh, grabbed my rod and just snapped that snapped oh, that rod. Cause I didn't bring him no uh, peanut butter sandwiches. All I figured he was throwing a fit. <laughs> And I was like, all right, listen, uh, I ain't bringing you no more peanut butter sandwiches. Screw this, you know. And uh, and it's almost like he's sitting there. You can see him sitting there watching around the tree. He'll do this when I ever come. I loaded everything up and I left. I said, then it, I wasn't going to be feeding him no peanut butter sandwiches. Uh, you know, it, that was before uh, people uh, say now don't uh, gift them or don't, don't, uh, trade with them or whatever at that time i didn't know nothing about that i just knew if he's going to break my rod and reel because i didn't bring peanut butter sandwich and dig them it i ain't come back over <laughs> and uh, so uh, we uh, stayed isn't it? right we stayed down there uh, until uh, i think it was march Oh, in 2006, uh, we couldn't find another place to rent down there after the uh, hurricane uh, because uh, the government come in there and all along the coast, they bought up all the rental property for a flat price, 1800 a month. And it, something that normally a rent for uh, 350 $400 was getting $1,800 a month. And they give it to all those Katrina evacuees. Right. Well, uh, Daddy had uh, uh, cancer and uh, so... Uh, Nathan was his uh, only grandson at that time, so we decided to move up here so we could spend time with uh, Nathan. And uh, uh, my wife at the time was uh, pregnant with Emery, so we moved up here. And after we got up here and uh, got settled, uh, I, I decided, well, you know, if they down there, they got to be up here because people talk about boogers all the time. So uh, I went around... Uh, to different places, uh, Second Creek and, uh, and Dry Creek and uh, Panther Creek, and uh, started going around Natchez Trace. And I was finding, uh, tra I was finding uh, all kind of signs along Natchez Trace. And I thought, that, that's kind of weird. They got to be up around here. So uh, I started going places and, uh, and looking for them. And, uh, so uh, as I did, I started uh, finding them, you know, just just as often as I'd find deer when I was deer hunting, I'd find a booger when I was hunting them. And uh, we got up there, uh, let's see, I took Shadow, he, he was my dog I had at the time. Uh, I always took him crabbing with me and everything in the, in the swamp down there. And he was a, a black lab Rottweiler mix, solid black, real, a real good trained dog. Oh, uh, and uh, I'd carry him with me in the woods. I knew whenever he he come up missing, that uh, two things was uh, was uh, going to happen. Number one, I needed to get out of there. Number two, I was going to find him at the truck because he always uh, beat me to the truck. And uh, so uh, we there's a place up there that people go and ride their horse along uh, Natchez or uh, Trace. Don't, don't, don't. Get down! Get down! And uh, oh, I went up there and I parked and I got Shada out and we walked down the hill and there's a creek that run down through there. So we started just going up through the creek and uh, looking. And uh, after we'd walked 15, 20 minutes, I, I, I sat down a minute and uh, let Shada run on. Uh, he wasn't indicating there was nothing around anywhere. He was just uh, being a dog. So I let him go on. I sat there. And... Uh, I was sitting there probably about 20 minutes. 
and um, I heard something behind me is rustling around. Oh, and oh, I thought it sounded like squirrels rustling, dog leaves, you know. Wasn't even thinking about boogers, even though I was hoping I'd see one. Yeah. Oh, but you'd hear it, it, it rustling around and everything. And I, I turned around, looked back around in that tree, and there was a, there's a female booger. I was sitting there looking up in the, in the tree, and uh, she uh, was looking up and doing this number here. And and it was almost, you could almost see her say, look, there's a people over there, you better get down here right now and go. And no, uh, I didn't see nothing up the tree, so I sat back over and I watched. And you see limbs shake. And then this little old, uh, this little old uh, baby one uh, come down just like a monkey climbing down the tree and jumped on her back, went around her, uh, her butt and her, her knee and jumped on the ground and run, run off the other direction in the woods. And she looked back like at it at me to see if I was watching. And then she went in the woods and uh, left. Wow. And uh, I thought, hmm, oh, they got to be all over here, you know. I, I, we, we walked past that place, though, when we was coming up the creek, and there was never any indication that that, that little one was in that tree or that female was anywhere close. And that's what intrigued me uh, the most of them. Uh, they'd be there, and you not even know it. Uh, Shadow didn't even know it. He's a dog, you know. He, he smelled a lot of... Uh, more stuff than I did, yeah. but uh, he didn't pay no attention to that. Wow. And uh, so I went uh, looking around up through here, and uh, I contacted a few people that uh, uh, was up through here that uh, hunted them, or they were researchers. I'm, I'm not a researcher. I, I try to see what I can about them for my myself. So that if I'm hunting in the woods, I know how to deal with them when I see them. And uh, so, uh, oh, I was going around uh, oh, up there around Freedom Hills and and Coon Dog Cemetery and uh, and uh, Cane Creek around through there. And uh, I was finding signs of them. You know, it's, it's like either they're here. Or I am crazy, oh, and just seeing things that, and I would go with like if I found a limb that was twisted, and oh, first thing I do is look, try to oh, make it anything natural that I could. You know, if a if a tree limb seven feet up and it's twisted, oh, and and you'll notice they're twisted in different directions, and that may be oh depending on which hand they grab. I don't, they grab with, I don't know, you know. Some be twisted counterclockwise, some be twisted clockwise. But, uh, so, oh, uh, oh, I'd say these and i try to say, well, uh, could it be uh, like those side things that the, at the cities? Well, no, it's not chewed up all the way through, it's just that one. Well, uh, wind couldn't do it, because wind don't twist limbs. It doesn't matter how hard the wind blows, you, you gotta have some, something forced to twist the limb. Yep. And uh, uh, we don't have snow load down here uh, enough often for it to be that, and even the snow load wouldn't twist the limb. It might break it, but it ain't gonna twist it. Right. And uh, so when, uh, when I couldn't figure out what it was, I would, uh, I would just uh, hang around there and a uh, few, uh, weeks or whatever and see what I could see and uh, that's pretty much how I how I uh, got the experiences I did um, well that's good I, I want to get uh, I want to get all of it but let's move forward what's your okay. latest <clears throat> encounter well we uh, we were here uh, when uh, we moved up here Oh, I'd been living in a place in Lauderdale County, and uh, and uh, we'd had them on the property up there. I mean, it it was a daily thing. I talked with uh, buddies about it, uh, all daily uh, things. So when we moved here, oh, uh, I uh, I moved in and I looked over there, and the first thing you seen was a twist on a tree right over there. And uh, I was talking to uh, my buddy on the phone. I said, you ain't gonna believe this, there's a, there's a booger or twist, a tree twist right there by the house. And uh, that night, uh, when we were moving in, 
Oh, the first night we moved in, we heard one hoop at us from right over there, pretty close somewhere. And uh, so we went out there looking. Oh, my wife's uh, uh, kids didn't uh, believe in Bigfoot at the time, but uh, living here, uh, they, they've come around, I think. Uh, but uh, my boys have seen them. Uh, uh, her uh, son has seen them. She's seen them. Uh, she's seen uh, one out here on the front porch one night. Uh, she went uh, and was letting the dog out to use the bathroom. And uh, she looked up, and uh, there was one standing on the ground, and uh, she's five foot tall standing on that front porch, and she's almost looking at an eye. Right Sca- here? Yep, scared the crap out of her. It backed up and started going uh, back up through here uh, to these pine trees, and they always uh, come up down these pine trees up here. Uh, right over there in those in that little old pine scope there, uh, uh, I've actually found, uh, I put uh, out uh, sweet feed, so that uh, I could, I draw them up, see if I could see them. And I've actually got a, a print. Uh, that print was that wide, it's a hand print, where they'd reach down and grab that uh, sweet feed. Uh, and I showed it to different people. And uh, and was telling them about it. You got a picture of it? No. Oh, I, I didn't ever think to take pictures of stuff like that. Uh, I think my friends, I, I might have took pictures of them and sent it when we were talking about it. And uh, they might have it, but, but I don't. Just, you're not connected in a research group or anything no. like that. So you just, <clears throat> it's kind of like a guy who's growing a garden. He grows it for his own food. He right. He grow it to show at the county fair necessarily. Right. You see the analogy there? The right. Yeah. There. I, yeah. That's, oh, that's pretty accurate. I mean, I'm doing it. I was doing this for me and for my boys. My, oh, my boys are 10 months apart and they going to be wanting to learn to hunt pretty regular now, but back then, oh, they was too little to go to the woods with me. Yeah. But I was gonna learn what I could so I could teach them, just like if I'd been in bear country and I had them two boys, I'd go and watch a bear as much as I could see, number one, their, their temperament. Oh, uh, Number two, how territorial they were and how close I could get to them. And number three, if uh, I was on the menu. And, uh, <laughs> and that was the, Ooh. That was the most important thing for me, and and uh, you know I've got a Native American heritage, uh, and I've uh, I've listened to the Native American stories that I could I could collect over it, and uh, you know most of them say they're cannibals, uh, it, and the way I see that, you know if if a wolf eats a coyote he ain't a cannibal, but if he eats another wolf he's a cannibal. If, uh, if one of these things were eating people, I don't think it'd be cannibals, but if they were eating each other, they would be. So uh, people talk about they can't find a body. Maybe whenever uh, one of them dies, the other one eats him. I don't know. That could be true. I just think that's a possibility because even as, uh, as early as uh, 150 years ago, uh, humans were eating other humans in the West uh, Pacific. Right. Uh, the islanders over there, you know. Uh, that's the same uh, way with Samoans. Uh, the worst, uh, the worst uh, insult they could do is stick her tongue out at you because that's saying I'm going to eat you and turn you into a uh, defecation. Right. And uh, so, you know, if humans, as smart as they are, uh, resorted to that as a ritual, if they're as much like us but uncivilized, who knows? Yeah. You know, we just don't know, but uh, you can't never tell. Uh, but the uh, way I see it, and I'll, I'll go back to that wolf analogy again. Uh, I've been around them a lot. I've never just felt uh, like I was terrified, but a couple, oh, one time for sure, I, I'll tell you about a little bit, but uh, oh, I've never had the feeling that oh, they're just out to do me in. Um, it's kind of like a wolf and a, uh, a coyote or a wolf and a fox. You know, if, if that wolf's eat and he's getting him drink of water and that fox come, or coyote comes around him, 85, 90 percent of the time, that uh, smaller one is okay. Uh, they can drink. They're both predators. They, they, they both eat the same thing. They're both canines. Well, if they, uh, if that wolf ain't eat though, and he's had a bad day and he's uh, pissed off because every rabbit he tried to catch got away, or, or uh, he couldn't run down a deer, and he sees that little old uh, coyote or fox, he's gonna eat. That, that old coyote or fox ain't gonna go home. 
But uh, and that's kind of way I see these things. Uh, uh, no doubt they're a primate. Uh, you know, a lot of people uh, put uh, uh, supernatural uh, uh, characteristics to them, and I don't know if I ascribe to any of that. I'm open-minded about it. I know uh, there's uh, some people who uh, who uh, believe that, but uh, I when I started uh, uh, investigating uh, for myself to learn what they were, uh, I knew that the first one I seen and... Uh, and the other ones I seen look mostly like a gorilla or orangutan or a mixture of that. Oh, they didn't look like chimpanzees or nothing like that to me. Oh, and I figured, well, if if they're oh, looking like that, they've got to have some characteristics of one or the other. Yeah. And so well, I started studying uh, uh, gorillas and I started studying orangutans. And uh, one thing at uh, at uh, I've thought about was you always see these tracks and they're in a straight line. Oh, people talk about it don't matter if they're five feet apart or or four feet apart or they don't walk like us where they 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 take steps. Right. They they walk in a straight line. Well, oh, gorillas and orangutans, oh, the babies until they get a certain age all live in in trees. So can't nothing get them. It's only after they get uh, big enough to get on the ground that uh, they are strong enough to defend themselves that they walk on the ground. Well, if these uh, creatures are, are primates, then it would make sense if they learned to walk, they learned to walk on limbs, and they walk front to back. That's a good point. And then uh, when they got big enough to walk on the ground, they're not gonna change the way they walk. Uh, they've been walking for the last four or five years. Yeah. Uh, and they just keep that same. And that'd be why they, uh, you see them, they pick up their leg a little bit higher and set it down because they're going to make sure that they're not going to slip sideways off that limb. Right. And that's just, uh, that's just one thing that I think, uh, just, uh, just thinking about it, and that's an opinion and it's never been proven. But Well, I mean, everything's always up in the air with these things, and I always say until we, <clears throat> until somebody a lot smarter than us, gets a hold of one and studies right. it and uh, is able to observe them in the field and in the captivity to study their yeah. anatomy and things like that. We're just, any any idea is fair to me. Yeah, well, well I think that uh, the people that you would uh, want to convince that they're real already know they're real. But the thing is, <clears throat> to think about it, you have to think in logical terms. Right. Because there's no other animal on the planet that vanishes into thin air. And right. that's what some people claim these things mm -hmm. do. And what they say is they walk through portals or they cloak. They have they, they can change the molecules in their hair mm -hmm. like a chameleon does its skin. Right. And, like, become the environment. They don't really vanish, but they just kind of vanish from your sight. Mm -hmm. But there's, you know, animals do do that, but they don't just vanish. And we don't have any other... Any other creature that we've ever, I mean, there are no creatures that are supernatural. There right. just aren't any that There's we not any. Right. can compare to. Right. So, well, I and don't. The same people who say, well, the DNA, you know, I keep hearing this, but I've got the female DNA, they've got the, you know, the other human genome or whatever. Half these people don't even, they're just repeating what somebody on YouTube said, don't you think? Yes. I think that's. Right. And, uh, you know, you're talking I about... I mean, if you put a DNA sequence graph or readout in front of them, they would have no idea what right. they're looking at. Well, you know, people, uh, as far as them disappearing, I mean, you, you can look at native scouts in the in the military. Uh, you know, and this goes all the way back to pre-Civil War. Those guys were, were really good in the woods. You wouldn't hear them in the woods. You wouldn't see them in the woods, and you'd walk right by them, wouldn't even know they're there, because those uh, braves were taught growing up. They they lived in the woods. They knew how to act, how to blend in, and they they were part of that environment. And if something like a human with a, a brain the size of ours can do that, 
you know, uh, then uh, something with a brain twice the size of ours, or at least that big, I think, or just the size of their head, that lives in the woods all the time. I mean, it, it's that's his home. He's going to disappear. I mean, no, uh, and it's not, it's not, in, in my opinion, it's not supernatural. It's just uh, like if we were wearing a ghillie suit, we could walk, uh, we could lay right there in that high grass and uh, you'd never see nobody if you're good. Yeah, and and I kind of think that's that's more what it is just because, uh, you know, they got chameleons that change colors. We don't have another primate that changes colors, uh, you know, and uh, that's just my opinion on that. Well, I mean, that's one thing, you know, being so good in the woods, I mean, a deer, you know. Right. My son came over and he, he wanted to, he had an afternoon to kill, and so he climbed a tree with his climber with his bow a couple of days ago, and he had a doe all around him. He could hear her, and, but the leaves are still on, but he, right. never, he could never see her. He finally got a couple of glimpses of her. Right. And he wanted to kill that doe so bad. But uh, he... They're just good at staying out of sight, right. you know. So that's another thing. I mean, but that's a lot different than walking through some third, fifth dimensional portal right. or something like that. Yeah, and I agree with you. I, I, I've never been one for the woo aspect. Just because I can only talk about what I've experienced. Yeah. And I've never experienced anything that's supernatural around them. Yeah. Um, and I've got friends who have, and I respect their their uh, report of it because I look them and I know they ain't lying. But uh, I just haven't experienced that. And I don't get off on speculation where, uh, well, because this person has said this, then I'm going to, I believe them, so I'm going to go with that. I, I go by just what I know. And... Uh, the guys that I talk with, I, they'll tell you I don't have a problem saying, well, I don't know about that. Oh, I just know about this, this, this. It's like uh, we got in a conversation one time, uh, me and two more guys, about uh, uh, how they throw stuff. Because, you know, stuff is always uh, thrown and you never see where it comes from. Well, I was sitting uh, down on a uh, creek uh, down there off of Natchez uh, Trace uh, one day. And uh, there was uh, uh, something moving around in the in the woods over there. And there's, uh, uh, I sat there listening. I thought it was uh, maybe a, a coon or something because it didn't sound like it was very big. And uh, I got to looking, and it was a little old bitty uh, Sasquatch, probably about four foot tall. And I sat there looking at it, and it would look around a tree like this right here at me. And it was right across the creek. And it would, oh, it, it'd pick up something, hold its hand like this right here, and sling it like that right there, and it would come straight at me, just just as accurate as if I'd oh, shot it. Up? Huh? No, it, it it always landed right around me, like it was trying to run me off, but it wasn't trying to hit me. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, if that thing could wanted to hit me, he could have hit me any time. But you, oh, and he was throwing oh, oh, hickory nuts at me, you know, with the with the shell on them. Yeah. And he's grabbed them like this right here. He's throwing it like that. Well, I've seen gorillas throw stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, so... Uh, I zoo, they throw their own poop like that. Right. <laughs> and uh, so uh, uh, that's how I know that uh, they don't throw like a man. They don't throw overhanded like this. Yeah. Well, they throw sidearm. But if they did throw overhanded and they were trained, they could probably hum a rock better than any uh, Major League Baseball player because uh, just sideways, they... It, it it wouldn't doubt or it wouldn't surprise me if they threw rocks and hit deers in the head and uh, knocked them out and uh, killed oh, yeah. them. Yeah, no doubt about that. No doubt about that at all. Oh, I'm still wishing I could see one, Joe. Well, uh, you ought to go out with me sometime. I, uh, uh, my boys, matter of fact, uh, when they, they were 12, uh, I'd been going doing this for a long time. And uh, the, uh, around our house, we had them up there. We'll go back and talk about that. Oh, uh, I lived up there in Lauderdale County, and I built a fire like this every night out there. And uh, one night I come in, and I didn't have my fire. And uh, I heard something in the, in the back. Uh, 
uh, we had a field kind of like this in here, but uh, about 60 yards back, there was a, a pine scope of pine trees, probably 25, 26 feet tall. And uh, I heard something popping uh, limbs in there. And it sounded like it. Uh, it sounded like somebody sitting there breaking firewood, but it was it was bigger. You tell it's bigger limbs, you know. And I I put my uh, my uh, spotlight out there. Oh, I had a, a, one of those big old red black and decker uh, spotlights, and I hit a set of eyes. Uh, uh, what I thought was about ten feet off the ground. They was that as big around as uh, half dollars and probably six and a half seven inches apart. And uh, that, uh, I hit that a lot, and I thought, oh, there's got to be an owl over. That's only, you know, that's the only thing. And we heard owl calls around there all the time, but we never saw owls. And uh, I seen, I was sitting there shining a the light on it, and that thing would drop its head uh, down to its chin and look up. And uh, I thought, oh, owl don't do that. And I kept that light on it, and he dropped his head again and looked up. And oh, I didn't move again. And he it turned uh, 90 degrees, and uh, you heard two steps, ch -ch, which wasn't no uh, owl. And then you didn't hear nothing else. Uh, so uh, uh, every time that I've been around them and they're not uh, aggressive, that's what they that's what they tend to do. They they look at you, and uh, and uh, see what you are, but they won't look you in the eye. They'll look, they'll look down, and then they'll look back at you. And if uh, you don't uh, give any ground, or if, if uh, you're ignorant enough to just sit there and uh, and stare at them, if uh, if they are not uh, being aggressive, they're going to make a show of turning 90 degrees, and you'll hear two steps, and you won't hear nothing. Um, All right, we're we're almost at about an hour, and that's about as long as I can make the show. Okay. How long is your? You said you've had one aggressive encounter that kind of worried you a little bit yeah would that take a long time to not really i mean i can condense it down oh uh, you want to save it for the next time I come out? sure we'll save it next time i mean i've got i i talked to you about this stuff all night because like it, i said this it, is ongoing for me it scared you pretty good though right uh, it, it it was yeah it concerned me pretty good bit all right thanks for letting me record you. oh you're welcome anytime Okay, that's going to wrap this video up about an hour long. I really appreciate Joe inviting me over. I, he's invited me back anytime I want to come. He has a campfire three or four nights a week right out in his backyard. He lives way out in the country. It's a beautiful place. I was noticing what a vast sky. He's got such a big sky behind his house. And just stars were pretty that night. And the fire was crackling and it was perfect. And I can't wait to go back. Thanks again, Joe, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks.